Okay, welcome again guys to class. So today I'll be showing you how we can make homemade pizza. It's very simple, very easy. We only need some few ingredients to start off with the dough. So first, I have my mixing bowl. I have one and a half cup of all-purpose flour here with me. I have salt. I'll be using just a little of this. I have my dry instant yeast inside this safe container. And then I have my sugar. So we'll use this to balance the taste that the salt is going to give us. Okay, so first we'll put in our flour, our one and a half cup of all-purpose flour into our bowl. Next, we'll throw in the sugar. Now to my yeast, I'll be using half teaspoon of yeast. So, I'll throw in the yeast. I'll just use a little a pinch of salt that's enough and i'll use half cup of warm water so just throw in the warm water that's it so it's time for us now to to mix our dough so back on my mixer i'll also be using the dough hook just like uh, the last class fixing your dough properly and uh, so we'll start on low first to so incorporate all our ingredients here before we can now hide the, the mixer. So as you can see guys, just look at look into this. You see how our dough is incorporating, right? It's coming together. So we'll leave it like this on low until it looks well. So a little touch of vegetable oil and we'll allow that to mix too. Okay guys, our dough is already ready as you can see. So we'll take out the dough. We'll take it out. Dust a little bit fluff on the dough. Then we walk it into it. Don't be scared, just gently walk the dough. Like the last class I said earlier, massage your dough. Do not overwork it. Pamper the dough. Because that's the only way you're going to get a good result. So guys, our dough is ready. We're going to proof this dough for 30 minutes. After which, we would roll it and we'll start our pizza. So with me here is a bowl. I'll be using this bowl for my proofing. So a little bit of vegetable oil. And then I'll carefully, as I said, lift my dough. And then just gently place it here. So it's going to rise here for 30 minutes. It's time for us to cut our onions. Okay, so so we we'll chop it nicely, nicely chop the onions. Okay, so we'll be using our non-stick pan to prepare our sauce. All right, guys. So for the sauce, we'll be using the organic tomato, and we'll use this to give it color for our topping. This is the red, the green, and the yellow bell pepper. That's it. Light our gas. The next thing that we'll put is the vegetable oil. So try as much as possible to be a little bit generous with your vegetable oil. And we'll allow this to heat up. While we wait for our oil to get hot, we'll would start to chop the tomatoes roughly. So we we'll take off the head and just roughly chop the tomatoes. 
into little chunks. I'm using organic tomato because of the freshness. So you can see my tomatoes are strong and they are ripe. So I'll just take this handful of parsley and then the same thing too. I'll roughly chop it. Okay, so guys, we'll be using the minced meat. This is actually beef. We're going to use this as our topping for our pizza today. Okay, so our oil is already hot. The first thing we're going to do is to flavor this oil. We're going to use the onions that we chopped earlier. So we'll throw in our onions. Just when our onions turn translucent, then our tomatoes, our organic tomatoes will go in and the parsley. As you can see, it's already translucent. Then we'll gently throw in the organic tomatoes. At this point, we we'll lightly season this with a little salt, not too much. And we're also going to use a little bit of sugar to kill the sour taste of the tomato. So you just use your molding spatula. And we'll work that tomato in the pan. Time for us to put our sugar. So, about um, one tablespoon of sugar, just gently put that on top of the tomato. This is going to help us take away that sour taste through in the pasta. That was a little bit. Look how beautiful. It smells really nice. So, with your spatula, gently mash the tomato inside your pan. Smash it up. If you don't have the spatula, you can also use something like this, the potato masher. So, this will help you form that thick paste you're looking for. So, you just just smash it a little bit, not too smooth, not too long. Alright, now it's time for us to mold our beef and throw it into the sauce. So our beef will season this lightly with salt. Today is it? Just lightly and we'll add a little bit of black pepper to this into our beef I'll use my hands to work the beef just like this and then I'll mold it into my tomato so we'll mold it into chunks the beef is going to suck up those flavors and the parsley is giving us our beef it's already cooking inside the sauce, so we'll use this spatula and then we bring it together. You can see it's looking really chunky and saucy. Just a little bit of water, that's all that we need. Stir it up. Our sauce is already ready. It's time for me to test it. So my spoon It's really nice, it's packed with a lot of flavor So the next thing we have to do here now is to roll our dough make the pizza and then put the topping I have preheated my oven to about 155-160 uh, degrees is what I'm going to be using to bake my pizza today If you don't have a pizza board you can use this flat cast iron skillet in my hand so i have my flat iron skillet today and i'll be using this for the pizza i also have my 
baking paper i will line it properly and then i will just lightly touch olive oil or vegetable oil or whichever one you have just don't eat too much that's enough and we will just lift our pizza dough we will lift our pizza dough and place it on top of the soup with a cake lifter or whatever you want to use you gently lift your pizza forget it might look rough just lift it and then place it so once you place it then you can now rearrange and then you tuck the edges just like this tuck it to create something like a bowl so i can hold your sauce for you so carefully poke this side of the pizza poke it poke it with a fork like the one in my hand press it and then the very next thing we're going to do is to put our topping so with our spoon carefully lift the topping and then we we'll just place it on top lay it off generously then I have paprika here so I would use my teaspoon and just a little bit of paprika just on the top of the pizza and I'm going to do the same with the fenugreek take the fenugreek, dry fenugreek leaves one teaspoon too and then just spoon it over the, the pizza the next thing that we're going to do next is to put our cheese so this is a melted parmesan cheese so i will spoon the cheese we'll just place it on top on top of the pizza yeah so the next we're going to do now is to lay our pizza with some more cheese and we're going to be using cheddar cheese with me here is my cheddar cheese so I'll just remove them from, I'll remove it from the nylon of the pack. And then you lay it off on the pizza. I'm going to use three pack of this cheddar cheese. The cheddar cheese adds this, there's this fine aroma that cheddar has on pizza you can also use your hand still just split it like this more cheese and now it's time to bake i will garnish my pizza using these three bell peppers so i'll take about one over four each of the bell peppers so this is enough yellow green and the red so we're going to cut this into julienne Place our garnish on top of our pizza. We decided to use these three colors just to give it beauty, to make it look really beautiful. It's time to go to the oven. Ready to go into the oven, as you can see. My oven is preheated. So I'm going to bake this for approximately 30 minutes. Our pizza, as you can see, it's already ready. So, with me here is my pizza cutter. I would like to turn this. So, if you want more cheese, you can try to add more cheese. If you don't want cheese like me, you can try to take, you can try to add little cheese. You mustn't need too much cheese on your pizza. Let's cut this very well. Then 
にあるタイプです。So this is really nice. See you guys in next class.